Hi, my name is Shelby Chester and I am a student here at Texas State University as well as an environmental interpreter and aquarium technician here at the Meadow Center. We have a multitude of creatures here in the aquarium of Discovery Hall and during this time of quiet we are taking the opportunity to share with you guys uh, the different salamanders, fish, and turtles that are living here. Today we're going to be talking about one of the two endemic and endangered species that are found here at the Discovery Hall Aquarium, the fountain garter. Fountain darters are small fish, hardly more than an inch long when fully grown. They live near the bottom, which is where they find their food, mostly small aquatic insects, crustaceans, and worms. Like the other darters, but unlike most fish, they lack a swim bladder, which means they don't float. So when they want to move up, they have to keep moving their tails, and as soon as they stop, back down they go. Not floating is a good survival strategy for these little fish. Being on the bottom among the plants helps them hide from predators, and it's also where they find the invertebrates they eat. They're well adapted to life on the bottom thanks to strong pectoral fins that act like little legs, enabling them to scoot or dart around in the water very quickly for a short distance, as well as keep their heads up in search of food and threats. Imagining the darter's world from their perspective, being on the bottom of Spring Lake is reminiscent of an otherworldly landscape. Mountains of limestone rocks interspersed with forests of complex plants like the prehistoric looking cabamba and globules of green and red algae very important for the darters because they host the greatest density of scuds, tiny shrimp-like creatures that the darters feed on, and provide shelter for juvenile darters. This tiny world is held in a delicate balance. Algae and other plants break down over time and become humus, basically underwater dirt. If too much breakdown happens at once, it can change the water chemistry, and buildup of humus reduces the area of suitable feeding ground and places to hide. These effects change the darter's critical habitat for the worse. That's why it's important for the springs to always flow with clean, unpolluted water. They help carry debris away so that more rocks and clumps of live algae stay exposed on the bottom. Our volunteer divers also play a vital role in much the same way by waving away overgrown decaying vegetation from the spring sites, a process called fanning, essentially multiplying the spring flow effect. So it's not just important for us to conserve water in central Texas so we don't run out, we also need to keep the Edwards Aquifer mostly full and fully unpolluted so the springs flow clean if we want to save the fountain garter. There's another threat too, the invasive Placosimus, or sucker mouth catfish. These living vacuum cleaners, native to tropical South America, are sold as aquarium cleanup fish. They eat algae, which is nice for your fish tank's glass, but they can destroy the algae mat habitats for dozens of fountain darters in one meal, especially when they start to get big and they can get over two feet long. It's even thought that they can suck up the darters themselves. So please, don't release aquarium fish into our local waterways. Fountain darters get their name from the springs that form their main habitat. They are associated upwellings of water through the sand and rocks and the plants, including the masses of green algae that grow nearby. In this aquarium, we tried to recreate that habitat by including lots of water plants in the tank, along with big pieces of holy limestone, the same kind that makes up the bedrock under Spring Lake, and even simulated springs, just like the ones you'd see on the glass bottom boat ride here at the Meadow Center. These fish might like fresh flowing water and lots of hiding places in the rocks and plants, but in the wild, they also need the just right conditions that the springs provide to supply the water with the temperature and chemistry necessary for their survival. Here in the Discovery Hall, we only fill their tanks with the local spring water, which is constantly circulated through chillers to keep it at 21 degrees Celsius. Only two bodies of water in the world have these conditions to support native populations of wild fountain darters. The Comal River, just down the road from us in New Braunfels, and the Upper San Marcos River, especially here at Spring Lake, which is where that river starts. Darters are a group of fish in the perch family, Persidae. There are more than 150 different species of darter in North America, but the fountain darters are unique and one of the biological treasures of the twin Comal and San Marcos Springs of Central Texas. Thanks for joining us and taking an in-depth look at Spring Lake's endangered fish, the fountain darter. Make sure to keep a lookout for more videos sent out by the Meadow Center Aquarium staff.